How many times have you heard the phrase zero emission vehicle? How many times have you heard that EVS are green enough to slow down global warming and save the planet? Well, that's not going to happen because they aren't all that environmentally friendly. It's time to get real about EV's environmental impact and that's why. We're about to give you five reasons why we think EES are anything but eco-friendly. Welcome to Evolution Tech, where technology meets tomorrow. Leading the charge into the ever-evolving landscape of electric vehicles, EVs, and groundbreaking green technologies. Wait. Number five, it's not just about TO2. About TO2, when people talk about the benefits of electric cars, they always put the store about TO2 emissions first. Those advocating for EVS always start with the same sense how EVS don't emit any TO2. But let's think about it again. What about other polluters? Why don't we talk a little bit about them? It's because it turns out that EVS aren't all that environmentally friendly to run an electric car, you need batteries, and to make batteries you need all kinds of raw materials that need to be mined, extracted, and transported, of course. We're talking about rare earth elements like lithium cobalt or graphite, which are currently the most precious goods in the automotive industry. All these elements exist under the surface of the earth and require pretty aggressive methods to be extracted. Let's take lithium as an example. According to some studies, you get 75 tons of acid waste for one ton of rare earth elements like lithium. Moreover, each metric ton of lithium requires 500,000 gallons of water while toxins from mining easily leach into surrounding water or soil. Just think about how that waste is handled in developing countries where major mining companies tend to avoid any unnecessary expense, especially when it comes to deposing. Have you seen any of these mines around the world? These images look like they've been captured on Mars, with a surrounding area being completely devastated biodiversity loss, air contamination, water loss. That's what you get when you mine rare earth materials. Moreover, deposits of rare earth materials often contain radioactive substances that can spread around pretty easily. With dust and water, do you still think that CO2 is the only thing that should be measured? Number 4. The Manufacturing Process What about the manufacturing process? But even if we put aside rare earth materials and focus on CO2 things are nowhere near as good as some like to present, just like IC cars EVS also need energy to be produced, so those stories about minimal carbon footprint are simply not true. First of all, just take a look at all those gigantic machines that mine rare earth elements. Do you think they're powered by batteries or some sustainable source of energy? No, they use fossil fuels and they use a lot of it. Then there's the transportation of materials. Finally, we come to production and to produce EVS. You need energy to run all those plants with batteries as the core component of EVS way more energy is required and with the ever increasing demand for EVS. The result is a pretty hefty carbon footprint even before they roll out from the factory line electric cars to so much damage way more than conventional IC cars. According to some research, the gap is so big that an average car that burns gasoline needs to make around 100,000 miles just to catch up with EVS in terms of carbon footprint number four. Where does the L electricity come from? As we've just mentioned, electric cars leave a much bigger carbon footprint initially, so gas barred cars need to drive thousands of miles only to catch up, and that's in an ideal scenario in reality. We're talking about much higher mileage because those who claim that electric cars don't emit TO2, once they roll out from the factory well, they're wrong. Why is that it's because you still need power to charge batteries on a daily basis, and if you wonder where that power is coming from, it comes from many sources and most of them are not clean according to experts. Only 39% of the world's energy is clean meaning it comes from wind, sun, or nuclear power, plants the rest of this power and that would be 61% is coming from carbon-emitting power plants, which leads us to a paradoxical situation. Here, most of the energy stored in batteries actually comes from coal. In such a set of circumstances, it's obvious that electric cars also emit carbon dioxide. On average, experts estimate that would be around 100 G per mile driven to the math, and you'll get around 11 tons per 100,000 M driven for comparison an average gas-barred car would admit. Number three tires and brakes around 35 tons all in all evs emit less but there's no way there's zero emission vehicles with the further growth of the ev market 
and the further increase of plugged vehicles, it's obvious that they'll need additional power. Will it all come from sustainable sources? Or maybe we'll see an increased use of coal and other fossil fuels? It's hard to predict, but we're pretty sure we're years, if not decades away from getting all or most of that power. The only ones that pollute, there's also the matter of tires and brakes, which also produce emissions, and they will continue whether you switch to an electric or carry on with a gas vehicle tires of course, wear down over time and need replacement. And when tires are rolling, tiny particles are released from friction. According to most experts, these small particles are actually a bigger threat to our health than exhaust emissions, with some claiming up to a thousand times more many of, of these particles are carcinogens such as D-benzopyrene, so they're bad for our lungs but also can have a negative impact on aquatic life. The same thing is true with brakes applying brakes, wears down pads, and discs releasing particles. According to the Air Quality Expert Group, these brake emissions are responsible for 20% of the total traffic pollution, and guess what electric cars come with large batteries under the floor, which makes them significantly heavier compared to internal combustion cars. In practice, this means that tires tend to wear down much quicker, so it turns out that electric cars pollute more than IC cars when it comes to these specific particles. This also means that EVS would use a higher number of tires during their lifespan, which only adds up in terms of CO2 emissions due to the increased tire production in the case of brakes the additional mass issue. Number 2. Battery Disposal Disposal once again, a few words about the batteries the most problematic part of the electric vehicle as mentioned batteries are made mostly from rare earth materials, predominantly lithium. And the thing with these elements is that not only mining and extraction are problematic, there's also the matter of disposal. Let's take lithium as an example. Again, lithium ion batteries, which are the most common types of batteries and electric vehicles, and their hazards are a threat to the environment in terms of toxic emission excess waste, and even in terms of potential water contamination. And although there's been a lot of talk about battery recycling, not much has been done in practice according to, to some estimations, recycling rates are 5% in the United States. For comparison, 99% of lead acid batteries are recycled so far, we've heard all kinds of recycling suggestions. All these batteries need to find a new lease of life. Number 1. Other Polluters Polluters as you can see, there's no way electric cars can be considered zero-emission vehicles, but even if they become eco-friendly at some point in the future that won't solve global warming as a whole, because passenger cars are nowhere near the biggest polluters in the world when it comes to CO2 emissions, the total transportation, which includes cars, buses, planes, ships, and trains, takes around 15%. According to some estimations, passenger cars account for just 7% of total carbon emissions. There are way more problematic sectors, starting from electricity and heat production. As mentioned, they're still mostly based on coal, natural gas, and oil, so it doesn't surprise that they take 23% of global TO2 emissions. Then there's industry, also with a 23% share, while agriculture, forestry, and other land use account for around 22% of total TO2 emissions. Somehow, IC cars have been marked as the biggest problem, and it doesn't look like governments from around the world are paying as much attention to other problematic sectors. Currently, all eyes are on the automotive industry and customers are expected to carry most of the weight by paying much higher prices for electric vehicles than they would normally pay for IC cars that's simply not fair. Thanks for watching and see you next time.